Good morning, good afternoon. Um, my name is Sarah Charters and I am the president of the United Church of Canada Foundation. Um, and I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar and thank you for uh, making the time to, to join. Um, it, as always on a Zoom call like this where we have many, many participants, if we can make sure that we're, we're muted, um, that would be great. And if you have questions, uh, we will pay attention to the chat and um, be able to bring those up towards, towards the end. Um, so uh, as we get started, I would just like to acknowledge that uh, the land that I live and work on has been um, the home for uh, Indigenous peoples for thousands of years. I live not that far from Lake Ontario in an area of uh, Toronto that's covered by uh, the Williams Treaty of 1923. Uh, and I, as part of um, my work around land acknowledgements, I am learning about that Williams Treaty and what the intent was, what actually happened uh, and where we are now so that I can, um, do that learning and share it with my, my friends and family, um, and we can figure out a way to walk the path of reconciliation with that knowledge. So I invite you, as you think about where you are located, to think about what that land acknowledgement means and what you might do aside from um, uh, potentially putting it in the chat, if you like, um, and, and just you know, what you're going to do with the knowledge of um, that that brings to you. So today we are talking about investments. And um, as a foundation, investing is a large part of what we do. The uh, foundation has been around for 20 years now. Um, and throughout that time, we have shared our learnings, um, our policies and procedures, and um, our introductions to um, uh, fund managers that we work with, uh, with communities of faith across the country. And so I can introduce our, some of our esteemed guests who are with us today. Um, we have the folks from uh, Canoe and Frontier Financial here. Um, Darcy Holston, the president, CEO, and co-founder uh, has joined us today and will be offering uh, his remarks sh shortly. Um, uh, as will uh, Rohan, the uh, vice president and portfolio manager um, that does a lot of work um, with us. So I think uh, without further ado, I am going to um, turn it over to Darcy um, and just to say that um, Canoe has been a partner for a good number of years now with the with the foundation and we are um, happy to have them um, share a bit about what they do and um, about what they what they their conversations with communities of faith are like. So Darcy, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks uh, very much, Sarah. Uh, so I think um, what I put together, Eugene, I'm just wondering if you could pop up uh, that slide. Thanks. Go to the next one. Um, what I was uh, encouraged to put together was just a little bit of an overview of, of who we are at Canoe. Um, and then after 10 or 12 minutes of my comments, I will turn it over to our um, the lead portfolio manager for our fixed income uh, team. Uh, based in Toronto. Um, so maybe just to jump right into it, um, we were introduced to the United Church Foundation through one of our acquisitions. Uh, we purchased the mutual fund assets from Fiera. Uh, Fiera had an institutional relationship with the United Church, and the assets inside of that relationship uh, were housed by a mutual fund dealership. Um, uh, called Fiera Capital Funds Incorporated, um, and the abbreviation was FCFI. So when we bought that business, we also bought um, the custodian and the assets that were managed by Fiera for the United Church. So very quickly, um, I had the privilege of meeting Sarah, and she and I talked about what was important to the foundation 
And it seemed uh, to me quickly uh, that there was good alignment from a, a value perspective and, and what I thought we'd be able to deliver. And, um, and maybe I'll just leave the, uh, the, the, the details and the, uh, I guess the courtship for lack of a better term uh, or the relationship construct uh, better uh, for perhaps another meeting. But, um, you know, I was pretty encouraged and excited about uh, growing this relationship. Uh, so if you take a look at Canoe today, we, we put our company together in 2010. Um, we named ourselves Canoe uh, quite simply because of the iconic imagery uh, that that brings to being a Canadian asset manager. And it translated in French beautifully. Um, it was um, just kind of hit us all, uh, you know, in the heart as, as uh, symbolic coast to coast to coast. Um, so we launched our business in 2010. Uh, we all came from uh, backgrounds of asset management. I had 23 years of asset management experience before uh, essentially passing the hat and starting our own firm. Um, today, we have three offices, uh, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. Um, we have 83 staff. 100% uh, of our staff are invested in the funds that we manage. Uh, the staff are all equity owners of the business. Um, and that just creates a pretty unique behavior for us uh, that not only stewards the capital we manage, but stewards our business. We're, we're a fairly cost-conscious organization. And, and I can assure you, every one of our 83 employees has very strong opinions about how we should run this business because they've all invested personally, and that's where their money is managed. So it creates a sort of a unique culture and a unique tension uh, in performance that um, I, I've described as strong. It's not always it's not always awesome. I don't like when people fight, but when we're managing people's money, uh, we can we can all have a single purpose. Uh, so there's a bit of a blend of our our asset mix. Um, our assets, fifty percent of our assets are in Toronto or not in Toronto, rather in Ontario, but half the country's population is there. So uh, the families and individuals and, and organizations that we manage money for, it's all sort of uh, population dispersed across the country. If we can go to the next slide, Eugene. Um, there we go. Um, these are some of our key tenants, active, independent, focused. We are not... Um, managing passive money. We're all active managers. Uh, each of the investors, including Rohan, who you're going to speak to, is measured against a peer group and a benchmark uh, for performance. And, and each of them has an ESG overlay uh, that we can speak to perhaps if we get time. Um, the 81 employees identified there, we just hired two this week. So that's where we come to 83. Uh, so we can go to the next slide, Rohan. Um, this, this, Next one, if we can get there, is our, our mission statement. Um, this has been an organic um, uh, statement that we all touch uh, at every town hall meeting internal at Canoe, um, every presentation we make to an institutional uh, investor or if there's a group of individual investors. And this quite simply is to enrich the lives of our investors, advisors, colleagues, and our community by providing excellence in asset management delivered with premium service. So we go to the next slide, Eugene. Uh, the partnership with United Church, um, as, as Sarah mentioned, started with Canoe in 2019 on the heels of an acquisition. Um, and Frontier Capital Funds Incorporated um, might be something you see on the statement. That is simply the distribution platform that we get our asset management to you through. Um, what we do at Canoe uh, is manage money. Um, we we, we, we uh, have 19 specific investment strategies with different specific investor policy statements and prospectus. So we have a bond fund. We have an equity fund. We've got a balance fund. And, 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 and the only way you can get access to our investment solutions is through an intermediary. So we, we distribute our product through all the banks in Canada. We distribute our product to all the credit unions in Canada. 
Uh, we distribute our product through Richardson, Raymond James, Canaccord, the independents in, the, in Canada. And, um, and we have a platform that we distribute funds through directly to our clients, and that is FCFI. So just think of it as the portal to get to Canoe um, that we wholly own. Um, so we can get to the next slide, Eugene. Um, the uh, benefits, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there. I think everybody can read the, the funds at, or the portals that we, we have access to through the United Church and the United Church Foundation. And we, we have a, a little bit of, uh, of our product in each of those uh, uh, six directives. Uh, so we go to the next slide, Eugene. I'll just talk about uh, the structure of our our investment management teams here. This is kind of a kind of a simple uh, picture. Uh, if you see the picture of an individual, including your own through who you're going to speak to, those individuals man manage a team of analysts, traders, uh, research associates uh, into those specific investment strategies that I described. If you see a picture, that means they're an employee or a partner at Canoe. If you see Aegon and Fiera, those are sub-advisors. They're not employees. So if there is a specific um, uh, uh, asset class that we want to get exposure to, that maybe we, we don't um, have the girth to hire, for example, high-yield U.S. debt, um, that's a very complex asset class. We'll go out and find a best-class manager to manage those assets for us. About half of our assets at Canoe are sub-advised and half the assets are managed internally. And as the CEO and co-founder, I like that. It keeps everybody on their toes. Um, the employees at Canoe have a real mindset of being excellent at their jobs because we can always move assets to sub-advisors. And the sub-advisors, uh, we pay them a fee to manage asset classes for us. They, they want more assets. And, and, and myself, as the ultimate designated person and CEO here, I can choose to weigh assets one way or the other, depending on how they're performing and how they're acting. So that tension ultimately results in a better investor experience for us. If it sounds mean, it's, it's I don't like the word mean, it, it's a tension of performance that I think is our fiduciary obligation to our investors. So we go to the next slide. There's four specific examples of what I wanted to show in terms of our mosaic of, of, of product. Um, so when we put together the vision of what we wanted to be as an asset manager in Canada, uh, we wanted a specific strategy for a growth market. We wanted a specific strategy for if the market is peeling off. We wanted a specific strategy for uh, young people that are perhaps in the accumulation phase of their lives, saving up for their first home or saving up for their, their children or saving up for, for whatever the life events. We also wanted a risk-off income strategy that's going to provide safety, security, income for those people that are maybe through the peak of their accumulation and are now thinking about distribution, preservation, transfer of wealth. And I'm pleased to share with you that we've got sort of a complete lineup to get us through um, all of those uh, transitional life moments and transitional market moments where your needs may shift. So the example of that, our bond fund managed by Rowan Through, who you're going to speak to, is one of the products that has you have access to through the the Frontier Capital Funds and the United Church uh, program. And the bottom right, uh, Canoe Defensive Global Balance Fund is managed by Fiera. It includes some of Rowan's fund, but it's also got uh, a global equity piece to it with an options overlay that protects on the downside. So that particular fund, uh, we were all quite proud of uh, how it handled itself in the early days of COVID. Um, as the market was collapsing, uh, that fund, by virtue of its name, held up really nicely. 
And that's also exposed in a number of the United Church uh, accounts that we manage. Um, so top left risk off, bottom right, a little more risk on with a defensive overlay. We've got some riskier uh, strategies than that, but I just thought I'd show that picture to give you a flavor of, of what we've constructed in our product lineup. So next slide. Um, uh, you know, I want to introduce you to Rowan. Um, uh, Rowan is uh, has been with us for seven years, I believe, Rowan. Um, manages our bond fund. Uh, his second in command is also a portfolio manager, uh, Derek Johnson. I don't know if Derek's on, but I know you're speaking, Rowan. And Rowan's got a, a team of analysts and a trader and a number of other resources at his office in, in Toronto that he utilizes. Um, he's not only a fully invested in his funds with us, um, he's he's got a, a, a really cool personal story that I hope Someday you're going to get a chance to hear how he how he immigrated to this country and and uh, was educated here and and earned uh, a spot in not only Canada but in our business to be uh, one of our most trusted and respected partners here. He's done a really nice job for our investors. And I think Rowan, what you're going to do is just give us a bit of a an overview of what you're seeing in the market right now. And so. Um, so maybe with that, I don't know if that hits all the spots, Sarah, that you wanted me to sort of fly by for an introduction, but. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Darcy. Okay. All right. I'll turn it over to Ron and uh, thanks everybody. Thanks, Darcy. And thanks, Sarah and the United Church of Canada Foundation for organizing this uh, beautiful event. Uh, just going back to what Sarah started off with, sometimes we, we have to reflect on how beautiful this country is. Um, and the land we live in. I was born and raised in a, a war-torn country called Sri Lanka, came to this country at the age of 15. Um, so I personally benefited uh, from the generosity of everything that Canada had to give and people like yourselves. So for me, it was very personal uh, when and Darcy and Kim and Eugene asked me to join uh, Frontier Capital in terms of helping uh, the investors like yourself. Uh, so that's that's my kind of background and why I ended up um, uh, working with Frontier. I've been with Canoe Financial for about uh, seven, uh, going on eight years right now. And uh, for, for me, it was very simple. Um, retail investors, for long as I can re remember, have not gotten the right advice they deserve. It's mostly retail advice. Uh, you read most of the news from newspapers and TV. Um, and by then it's too late. So for me, it was more of what do United Church members want? And the feedback we got was, well, I want to know what's going on in the market from the people who manage the money. The four funds that was uh, displayed and uh, spoken by Darcy, I'm personally involved in all of the funds from a fixed income point of view. And I work closely with Rob Taylor, who's head of fixed income, uh, sorry, head of equities and who is the CIO of the firm. Um, it was very timely uh, how I got involved with Frontier Capital. It was the start of this year and the markets have been in turmoil. Uh, so for us, a lot of handholding, uh, a lot of talking to United Church members about what we are seeing in the market. Uh, is it the right time to be in the right fund? Is it the right time to be buying fixed income given how much damage has the fixed income funds taken? Um, so for me to start, uh, probably pro probably giving advice uh, to investors, I had to figure out what the needs are. United Church members have a unique need. They have expenses to run the church. They have uh, monthly expenses. So for us, uh, how we manage funds at Canoe, our philosophy is very simple. Capital preservation, number one. You work hard for your money, you save, the last thing you need is money evaporating in the markets. So coming from a fixed income background, that is our philosophy, preservation of capital and generating income. So it was a nice fit for me to join Frontier Capital and talking to investors. Some of the questions we have gotten is, what's causing the market turmoil right now? And when is this gonna end? 
Um, and to that, I always go back to what the central banks are doing. Um, the Federal Reserve, the US Central Bank, which is the central bank for the global economy, uh, has been hiking rates. And every time central banks hike rates, that causes expensive credit, credit growth slows down, money supply decreases, that causes demand destruction, which should bring inflation down. The biggest topic the last nine months have been inflation. Whether you read the newspaper, whether you look at the TV, inflation has been at the top of mind for everyone. Whether you go to the grocery store or you're buying a new dishwasher, supply chain, inflation, and the Canadian housing market. Uh, so for us to take a, a view from a 30,000 uh, feet, we are able to better give advice to clients um, as to what does it mean when Bank of Canada hikes rates? What does it mean when central banks are tightening the balance sheets? Uh, so it was very good for us to have those conversations. Some of the people on, on the call today we have already met with, some of some new faces I'm sure we will meet over the next several months. Uh, the goal here is to focus on service and transparency. And going back to what Darcy said, Every one of us on this call from Canoe are owners of the firm. So this is not a sales pitch at all. This is more of helping our investors and giving some vision as to where the market is gonna go and superior service. Um, that, that was my ultimate goal when I joined and I hope we can deliver on that. We are not perfect, uh, but our goal is to make sure that uh, we give you what you need. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Shaman, Kevin, myself. We are here to help. Uh, and especially during market turmoil like this, uh, hopefully we can add a lot of value. Um, with that, I'm gonna stop. There's probably very specific questions you have uh, for us. Um, yeah, thank you, Rohan. I'm gonna pass it on to Sarah. Yeah, that's wonderful. I appreciate that. Um, that sort of snapshot of, of what you're hearing and the kinds of conversations you're having. Um, and so as I said at the beginning, I uh, would encourage folks to put their questions in the chat. Um, be, because of the type of webinar this is and the conversation, the type of conversation this is, the team at Frontier won't be able to provide specific advice for specific situations. But if you have, um, and if you have questions like that, uh, contacting them directly would be great. But if you have sort of more general questions, just um, put those in the chat and um, we will bring them forward. And so while you are doing that, I, uh, I'm gonna share my screen here and just um, tell you a little bit more um, about the uh, the foundation itself. I mentioned earlier that um, this is our 20 year anniversary. And um, so part of that is is having a, what we're doing is having a bit of a retrospective on where we've been looking back, um, but maintaining our focus on the future. The point of the foundation is to provide long-term uh, support for the work of the church uh, in all its forms, congregations, communities of faith. Um, we do some mission and service support as well. Um, and so about this time last year, our uh, board approved a strategic plan uh, and affirmed our um, purpose as being to foster deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice by attracting and deploying financial resources. So you'll see, um, you may be familiar with the deep, bold, daring that the general counsel office is, is uh, working with these days. And so, you know, being a partner with them, being a partner with the whole church, um, it makes sense that we are aligned, um, but have our own um, expertise. Uh, in there. And so um, we are focusing on four themes that we know are very important to United Church folks, anti-racism, climate justice or caring for creation, communities of faith, strengthening them, um, and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. And so our investing, our granting, all our work is going to be focused on these uh, four themes. 
and we do provide service to be a little more concrete about what it is we do to individuals um, through our long-term funds, for example, to grant seekers through our granting programs and to organizations like Communities of Faith looking for ways to um, do their work well so uh, and get support for doing their work well. Um, Short-term giving is one of the things that uh, we focus on, and um, that's mainly through gifts of security. So for communities of faith who don't want the hassle of having a brokerage account, we can help with that. And for individuals who want to give to their congregation, to their local food bank, to um, you know other charitable organizations using stocks or mutual funds, uh, we, we help with that. Our long-term giving is where our investing really comes in because people have entrusted us uh, so generously with um, gifts that are meant for the long term. So things like endowments, um, other long-term trusts that have a particular time frame to be used over, and things like bequests or, or gifts and wills, life insurance, etc. When we receive those gifts, we invest them and create a sustainable long-term support for the ministries closest to our donors' hearts. For those um, funds that we have that aren't, donors don't name as a specific use, um, and even sometimes when they do, depending on what that is, we have a granting program uh, that you may be familiar with, which is Seeds of Hope. And so that supports uh, communities of faith in their work, um, putting it forward projects that might benefit the church as a whole, our innovative new expressions of ministry, um, and that, um, foster uh, engagement with um, their community, the community that they work in. You may also be familiar with new ministry funds where we are looking for ways to intentionally create new ways of being church in the world. Uh, and we also offer scholarships for individuals. Um, and as I was saying, like, these are all the things that we invest. Um, and we have been so blessed and are so grateful for the fact that we have been entrusted um, with about 94 million in assets. It's, as Darcy and Rohan mentioned, it's been a rough year. You all know that. Uh, so a little less than 94 at this point. But um, we have good partnerships uh, with uh, Canoe uh, Frontier, as well as uh, Fiera Capital and Genus, Genus who manage um, the bulk of our assets. And so, um, as I said at the beginning, you know, we are holding this uh, webinar to provide information uh, and support to, to um, uh, help you become familiar with some of the investment opportunities that exist through us uh, and through our partners like Canoe Frontier. And, um, and we're always happy to talk more about that or provide other information like sample policies for your investments or your fund management, your grants or your gift acceptance, for example, and to connect you with other resources that will support your, your ministry um, where you are. So I can see that there are um, questions coming up in the chat and I am going to um uh there is a question um in particular that is from somebody who wants to explore investment options as a congreg congregation where and how do they start so certainly we can send you information um frontier canoe can send you some of their information as well and um i think that's i that's you, Francis. So I've got your email address. So we will make those connections for you. And if anybody else would like something similar, please just send us an email. Send our, our friends at Canoe Frontier an email. We'll put their um, uh, information, their their contact in the chat um, before um, momentarily. Um, somebody is asking about thresholds for investments. So it depends on what you want to do. Um, um, Rohan and, and, and friends at Frontier remind me, I think your minimum is 30,000. 
Uh, it's it's Kim here. Um, Hi, hello, Jim. everyone. Uh, we we do not have a minimum, so okay. yeah, we're happy to talk to everyone. Well, that's great. Kim is the um, C C O, right? Kim, Chief yes. Operating, Chief Officer. Operating Officer. Correct. Yeah. So thank you. So for uh, Frontier, there is no minimum. Anybody could start an endowment fund with the foundation in any amount. Um, and then other opportunities just kind of kind of depend. Yeah, and just to, um, for some of our congregation relationships, um, they have more than one account. So, you know, we offer flexibility where you may have an endowment account um, you know, uh, another account to save for future um, renovations, um, another one for scholarships. So we're we're more than happy to open even multiple accounts if you have different needs. Some have cash flow needs, some do not. Um, so yeah, so just don't even think about it as one account. We can offer a, a wide solution for you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, because uh, often. Uh, communities of faith do they have like you said they have their their reserve fund their manse fund their general fund there um so that's good information as well um and so heather is asking if a congregation is based out west should they be dealing with the calgary office uh we think of ourselves as one big team so we we've provided the contact information uh there so that's how you'll reach somebody at frontier and um uh, most of the staff for Frontier are based in Toronto, but we do many Zoom calls with clients across Canada, so that's uh, not a challenge. Um, so yeah, so use the contact information that's been provided in the package, and uh, we'll reach back out to you. Excellent. Um, Marge is asking, of the four accounts you showed, what was the return on investment pre-COVID? Is that I wasn't sure if that was related to the foundation accounts or if it was ours. So I just I wanted to mm -hmm. I don't want to assume. And maybe Rohan, you can jump in on maybe even the fees question. Maybe because you that's certainly something you hear often. Yeah, on the fees, um Sarah, it all depends on which fund you own. I, I do think we have a um a discounted series, a specific series to United Church members. Uh, those are questions all fund specific. Uh, we can obviously get back to you um, mm -hmm. if you can email Shaman. Um, and so, both for the for Frontier and with the foundation, the the fees are charged within the investment. There's no additional like nobody gets billed for their for their fee. That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Um, so when we send out some follow-up information, we can, we can include some, um, return specific information as well for folks who would like to see that. Um, uh, Dave is asking, um, about opportunities for individual church members and how they might access them. Yes, yeah, so the Frontier Capital is open to anybody. Um, so it's not just specific for congregations. So we also have uh, many, many other clients that we deal with individually. And so you can approach us as a as a you know a member of your congregation or individual. We have some congregations where um, you know, when speaking with us with their congregation needs, then it's translated into them making their own personal investments. So we're happy to have conversations on both. Um, both sides for sure. If there's um, even particular opportunities to maybe come in and speak to your congregation members, then we're also very happy to do that as well. Uh, and we'd prefer to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to talk about those specific needs and, and, and coordinate with you directly. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, what may also be important to say is that, um, and Darcy touched on it earlier, is that the, the foundation is very particular that our values show up in our investing um, and the and so you know for all the managers that we use or we have partnerships we have a lot of conversation around how that works um, what things will be screened in or screened out you know what kind of impact we want to we want to make with our investments because um, the um, 
as a foundation, we're obligated starting this coming year to give out 5% of our assets every year. But that leaves 95% that are um, not at work per se out in, you know, they're invested. So wanting to be sure that 100% of our assets are working um, in concert with, um, with our values in mind. And when um, Darcy and the team took over the United Church accounts, we had um, some really good conversations about what those values are and how they would show up. And the team at uh, Canoe and Frontier have done a lot of work on that front as well. And so um, I don't know, Rahan, if you want to say anything about that, but it's, um, it's, it's a great uh, connection. Yeah, uh, yeah, sir. I just want to add something. Uh, going back to what Darcy said in the beginning, every fund that we have here has an overlay, ESG overlay, and and not just because it it looks good. Um, it's it's proven that being socially responsible um, eventually adds a lot of shareholder value. Uh, so we don't just put that on because it sells. We truly believe in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Every one of us here, every portfolio manager, every employee, ethical. Uh, we don't invest in companies that are not doing the right things. We don't forget, we meet with the management team uh, on an annual basis. So if anything changes on that front, from a thesis point of view, we do redeem our investments. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can be sure that there's no reputational risk from an ESG factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And ESG is environmental, social governance. Um, you hear it a lot in the in the investing um world um and you know it is one of those things to your point rohan that you do have to be careful that um it's not just greenwashing for example that the that the manager the investment is actually um has those principles embedded and and you know the fact that you folks meet with um company management on a regular basis um really enables you to to have those solid conversations um Mike, yes, the relationship would be direct between the church and, and canoe. Yeah, so just to elaborate on that, so the meetings are directly between canoe frontier and, and the congregation. You have full ownership over the accounts, signing decisions, investment decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, sir. It's uh, Eugene. Maybe I can just add in a couple yeah. of things. Absolutely. Uh, so Canoe, Canoe offers uh, about 19 individual investments um, that basically caters to anyone's needs or a combination of. So it's just not the four that you had seen before. Um, <clears throat> Frontier is the conduit to which you have access to the Canoe funds, and Frontier does not charge any management fees. Unlike some other dealers out there that might take a, a cut of it, Frontier does not. Um, our special relationship with the UC goes beyond just congregations, but also extends to people. Um, and we could provide personalized uh, investment advice. Um, you can contact Sharman, Kevin, uh, John, who's not on the call, but also one of our advisors. Uh, they'd be happy to provide you with information. Um, let's see what else is there. I think that's pretty much just trying to summarize all the questions there. Um, Yes, we and, and Kim had mentioned we do have an office in Calgary. Uh, Frontier's office or head office is in Ontario. So yes, you might be able to speak with somebody in Calgary, uh, but all our advisors are located in Ontario, which these days I think virtually really doesn't provide an issue. Um, and then Saskatchewan, absolutely. We have uh, a lot of congregations in smaller towns that kind of fall off the map on, you know, bigger dealers. So we like to give everybody the same amount of uh, deserved attention. Um, so happy to help out. Uh, just please give us a call. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. So I'm going to give 30 more seconds for anybody who's got that last minute burning question that they haven't uh, that they haven't already asked. Um, 
and um, also let everybody know that uh, as you came in and as we started, you were you were warned that we were recording this. So uh, the recording will be uh, available. Um, should you want to share it within your community of faith, or want to come back to to one of the points, you have a question later. You know, what did what did you say? What did he say? Kind of thing. Um, you'll have access to that and. Um, not seeing anything else come through the chat. I want to once again thank you all for making time and being with us today. And thanks to our friends at uh, Canoe and Frontier for, for their time and, and sharing uh, their work with us. And uh, again, just an invite to give either the Foundation or Frontier a call. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, similar, similar to Mike's question. Um, can you the the foundation? We're basically making an introduction. So, if 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 you think the folks at Frontier can can be of assistance, we're here to say here they are. <laughs> Here's who they are, and uh, contact them directly so that the foundation is really just making an introduction. Um, and in in that case, yes. Like uh, as as if you were to put your your money in the bank on the corner, you can go get it back from um, uh, Canoe Frontier if you so desired. Yeah. Um, so I think um, maybe just a little context. There are some bodies within the church that. Um, want to be able to loan out money that will eventually be repaid. So it's kind of like money goes out, money comes in, money goes out, money comes in. But perhaps um, you might want to follow up with Paul. I can make that introduction for you to just think about what, uh, which of your funds might might work best for that kind of thing. Yeah, I think we probably would want to have a conversation to learn a little bit more about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Paul, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'll um I can make an introduction uh, this afternoon. Can do that. Great. All right. Um and and too, if you have other questions about the granting or about anything else that the foundation is doing, please don't hesitate to call. We love to chat with um, folks about what's happening where they are uh, and understand more about what's going on. So, thank you, everybody, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and rest of your week. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.